So let me uh, briefly introduce uh, Mr. Ling Kei Tang, uh, a former executive director for, uh, for BB Singapore and um, a, a dear friend of uh, BB Malaysia for the longest time, uh, more than 20 years, and not on the familiar faces to all of us. And he has recently just been appointed as dean in the Theological College. And also uh, congratulations, congratulations to him. And he has just gotten his uh, PhD as well. I think uh, last year, right, sir? Yeah. Yeah. So today, today he, nonetheless, with all the, uh, the, the credentials, but uh, we are glad and blessed to have him to share with us um, one of his hot topics, per se, uh, the philosophy of uh, Sir William Alexander Smith. So on the, the, the thoughts and, and, and lens from Sir William's point of view when he started the Boys Brigade initially and talking not about the how but the why. All right, so before I pass the mic to him, just some quick ground rules. Make sure that you keep your uh, mic muted so that we don't uh, disturb uh, the session. And if you can, turn on your video so that everyone can look at your face and your smile and your, your, your wonderful background as well. All right, so um, as the session goes, if you have any questions, feel free to put it in the chat group below. We'll collect the questions, then we're going to answer it after the sharing, after the Q&A. So, is it okay? If you're okay, give a thumbs up. All right, cool. Okay, so let me start the slides, then I'll pass the mic over to uh, Mr. Lin Kei Tang. All right. Okay, all right, passing to you, Mr. Ling Kei Okay. Well, first of all, uh, very good evening to all of you, <coughs> fellow officers of the Boys Brigade. First of all, I'd like to express my gratitude uh, to George and David Wong for inviting me to share on a subject, as he said, uh, that is close to my heart. This subject is, of course, uh, entitled A Philosophy of Sir William A. Smith. And uh, to be honest with you, this paper was first presented in uh, 2018 at BB Asia Anchor Summit. So, uh, in a way, it's, it's just a repetition. Now, uh, when I prepared that paper, um, I spent quite a lot of time. Um, in fact, I took time away from my doctoral research uh, to get it done. And I came to what, seven pages, came to seven pages. Now I mentioned this because uh, there's no need for you to take any notes today. Uh, and uh, you can request for the, the paper, the seven pages of paper from George and he will, he will give it to you. I, I also must uh, caution that, that because William Smith spoke and wrote and things about him were recorded in the last century. They are of a different kind of English, if you, if you know what I mean. They're not so easy for us Asians uh, to understand. But they do make good sense. So as we proceed today, I will try to uh, project on the screen the, the very words of Smith himself. And then if they're not clear, I can explain. Right? So this is the whole purpose of this paper then. Well, as usual, uh, and as it is customary in BB, we begin with prayer, right? Let's pray. <clears throat> Dear God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of being in this great organization known as the Boys Brigade. We also thank you for the life and the work of Sir William Smith, who built better than he knew in founding this organization. This afternoon, uh, we want to commit the session to you. We pray that uh, you will enlighten us. Uh, with the thoughts and the philosophy of Smith so that we can be more uh, conscious of what we are doing. To be our guide today, 
Bless, O oh Lord, the boys' brigade throughout the world and give to it greater power to advance your kingdom. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> now, many, uh, is, is a screen on the, the power, PowerPoint? Uh, George, is a, is a PowerPoint is on, all right? Uh, so I'm the one to do the controlling. Eh? Okay, so let me, okay, this is the title of what we're going to do. Okay, now many of you may have heard or even visited Madame Tussaud. This is, this is a wax museum in London, but I understand that they have branched out to other cities as well. Maybe not in Malaysia, but in some, uh, some other parts, in, or maybe in Europe and elsewhere. This is basically a wax museum and it is famous for displaying life-size figures of big timers, prominent people, politicians, uh, and, uh, even movie stars, in other words, history makers, they're all featured here. And the advantage of visiting a museum like that is you can then go close to all the figures you want and take a photograph or selfie with them as if you are with someone in person. So I believe if you, if you are able to visit Madame Tussauds, you can go near to perhaps President uh, Trump as well, or Her Majesty the Queen, and then standing next to them, you can take a picture of yourself. Now, I myself have visited Madame Tussauds once. It's a long queue to get the tickets, by the way. Now, in 1963, a likeness of Sir William Smith, the founder of the Boys' Brigade, was displayed in this museum. And this was in recognition of his founding the Boys' Brigade. And of course, more than just having founded the Boys' Brigade, uh, the, the honor was that he actually started what is today known as the Youth Service. More about that in a while. <clears throat> now, in case some of you uh, may want to plan to visit Madame Tussauds in the future, way after this pandemic's over, and you're trying to see Willem Smith for yourself in this museum, I'm sad, no, I'm sorry to say that William Smith is, is no longer there. His, his wax figure has been removed. And, uh, and, as has, and, and usually when they remove a, a person, a figure, a wax figure, they then have it melted so that the wax can be reused for another person. So this is sad and uh, I actually communicated with the curator of the museum to ascertain a few things. The details are in my paper so I won't, I'll be very fast or quick about it. According to the museum, they have decided to remove Smith and then have, the, have him melted out because they didn't say this but I think it's because they ran out of the space perhaps and maybe because William Smith was not regarded as so important after all in comparison with so many thousands of personalities in the world. Now, I'm sure that all of us are disappointed with what I've just said. <clears throat> but I shouldn't stop there, the story, because then we'll all, be, we'll all go away disappointed that something like that has happened to William Smith. But what I want to do is to continue the story by saying that although Madame Tussauds Museum um, had felt William Smith was not important enough and had removed him from display, Smith was actually greatly recognized 
as an important person. So let me just recount some of the honors that he has received. We all know that in 1909, Smith was made a knight by the king. And so he was then known as, which is why he was known as Sir William Smith, was knighted for having founded the Boys Brigade. Yeah, we'll leave it on that screen. Eh? Okay. Then a year before 1909, the city of Glasgow, where the BB was first founded, had a portrait of Smith unveiled and displayed in his art gallery. I'm not sure it's still there, or not. I'm not sure. But it was a real honor for a person to have his portrait displayed in the National Gallery of a major city like Glasgow. And then Baden Powell, the founder of the Scout Movement, in a letter to Smith proposing that Scouts and BB merge, you know, that, that came from, from Baden Powell. So in that letter proposing the merger, of course the merger did not take place, huh? Ben Power wrote, and I quote, we look to you, that to Smith, as the leader of the boy movement. What an honor, isn't it? And then after Smith's death in the year 1914, by the way, he died on the 10th of May, which is actually tomorrow. Yeah? <clears throat> Uh, after his death in 1943, there was a huge parade at Windsor Castle. And now a new king is on the throne, Her Majesty King George VI. He paid another tribute to Smith. And this is what he, he said about Smith. It's very famous words. He said, when the Boys Brigade was founded 60 years ago, from 1943, William Smith built better than he knew, for he started not only a great movement, but one from which all our present widespread youth training was destined to spring. What this meant is that he, Smith not only founded a great organization, a great movement, but he founded an organization from which our present day youth activities and organizations sprung from. <clears throat> so it gave birth to many youth organizations today. So this is a great honor paid by the King to Smith. And of course, there are other casual honor given to Smith. And I will project them on the screen. The uh, screen is not moving. <clears throat> we, we have some difficulty uh, uh, controlling the, the screen because this is my remote. Anyway, this is, these are the tributes to Smith. He is, uh, oh yeah, he's, he is now known as the pioneer of boyhood. We know what's a pioneer. A pioneer is someone who is at the forefront, an inventor. And as the king said just now, it was because of Smith that we have, we have youth training today. And so Smith is often referred to, or was often referred to as the pioneer of Bollywood. And then another quotation, that he was an inventor of a system for forming wild and intractable boy into the best specimen of boy's life. And this is the one I like very much, the third one. William Smith was the man who taught people to spell the word boy with a capital B. This is to indicate the importance of boy. And this again is important because up to that stage of history, boys in the UK and elsewhere, they were not 
really treated well. They were they were treated as um, urchins and and rascals and just to be tolerated. You know. But here you have Smith who saw the potential in every boy and he recognized how important they would be. And so he, he emphasized their importance and that's why he's the man who taught people to spell the word boy with a capital B. But I must say here at this stage that although I will be using the word boy today uh, to, throughout this uh, talk, this is, this is because historically the Boys Brigade only started as a boy only organization. But I personally believe that if William Smith were to found the BB today, he would have included a ghost. So please uh, uh, bear with me if I just use the word boy, I would include girls as well. So I'll give girls, uh, uh, the spelling of girls with a capital G as well. <clears throat> Let me go on. <clears throat> the next slide, I, I'm, I seem to lose control of it. Uh, uh, George, let, let me do it so I, I yeah, all right, this is the one. But let me let me do the control. All right, okay. No, the, not not yet. Just now the one. Just uh, George, let me let me do the control. All right. Yeah, I am. I'm, I'm not doing anything. I think let me re re adjust the control to back to you again. I'll disconnect now. I'll con give you back the control again. Can you see the control? I have a message here that the internet connection is not stable. So maybe that's the reason. Well, oh, George, you can you put the screen back to the object? Just one screen before this. One screen before. Ah, this is one. This is one. What I wanted to say here is that when Smith started the BB, he had no idea that it would succeed. And he certainly had no idea that it would become a worldwide organization. So what he did was he referred to this as an experiment. And so after founding the BB, he had to do an evaluation whether this experiment had worked or not. And this is what he wrote. He said, the BB object is to make boys soldiers of Christ. Now, after three years, almost daily experience of the effect of the work on the lives and the character of the boys who joined the is, and this, the words in red, I can testify that there are many boys on the side of Christ today who would never have been so as far as we can judge, but for the agency or for the work of the Boys Brigade. In other words, if not for the BB, many of the boys would not be on Christ's side. And this was the evaluation he made of his experiment after three short years. In other words, his experiment had worked. And that's why because his experiment had worked, that he's worth listening to. And, and that's the reason why it's, it's worthwhile uh, considering his philosophy for us. Let me go on. Are you still with me? I hope you are. <laughs> okay, that's right. We go on to, having, having done all that, uh, we now go on to some of the the elements of his philosophy, the elements. But before I, I proceed further, let me just uh, do a quick uh, pause here.
to just show you the literature that I have consulted for the rest of what I'm going to share. First of all, there is this book, an old book, a very good one, known as William A. Smith of the Boys Brigade. And then there is this book called The Story of the Boys Brigade. And there is one other book which I used to have a copy, but somehow it has disappeared. It's known as Pioneer of Boyhood. So these are the three books on the founder. And then there is a very short, small book, also about William Smith, a man who has something to say. This was done by the London district. So this is this quite a, a good one too. And then there are, there are general books about the history of the organization. And of course, you cannot get away with the uh, history of the BB without talking about the, the founder as well. This is quite a, a recent one. You know? This book, The Boys Brigade and Illustrated History. And then during the centenary, the story of the Boys Brigade, first for boys. This one is uh, quite, quite readily available. And then for those who can, uh, who are interested in the details, this is the one that is a uh, solid work. Sure and start fast the history of the Boys Brigade from 1983 to 1983. This is how, this is how thick it is. And uh, I believe this, uh, some of the chapters here were part of a PhD thesis as well. <clears throat> and then there is this uh, a casual one called Boys Brigade uh, Annual, also during a centenary. So these are the books. I have a lot more books to show you, but we won't have time for that. Uh, I, I'll just quickly flash to you. These are books. That, that I have a lot of uh, history books about BB in other parts of the world as well. Like this is the history of the BB in Ireland. And for the sake of uh, our Australian friend, this is, this is a history of the Boys Brigade in Australia. Boys Urging Men, a good one as well. And I used to know the, the author of the book. He has passed away. And first, The Faces of Boyhood, is about the BB in uh, New Zealand and then a recent edition again BB history in New Zealand. Anyway, I won't go to I won't show you the rest because we, we need to go on to the to the content of the philosophy. So back to the slide again, uh, the object of the BB. <clears throat> okay. Next slide please. I think all of us know by heart the object of the BB. And uh, what I want to say here is that the object of the Boys Brigade, word for word, was from Smith and his officers, the, the brother Hill, John Hill. Uh, you know, they, they, they sat down one evening and they, they composed the object. And every word in this object is meaningful every word of it. Now, before we go into the detail, the object of the BB as was from the beginning is shown on the screen with the exception of just one word which was added on later and that word is obedience. But other than that, this is word for word, the original BB object. Now, I must say that because of the introduction of girls into the BB, as in, in some territories, which is the advancement of Christ kingdom among youth, for example, or among boys and girls, and I think in Malaysia it's among members. And of course, when you change um, that gender, then you can't say Christian manliness to change it to character. So, but, but in any case, 
it is still the object with some little modification. So we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have a problem with that, I hope. <clears throat> but what I want to say is that every word here is meaningful and, and I will touch on it. But before doing that, I'd like to move on to the next slide, which explains why the object is important. And this explanation comes from uh, Smith himself. <clears throat> He said, and I quote, and it's on the screen for you. I do not know much about music, but I understand that the key note is the note to which all other notes require in some degree to conform if anything approaching harmony is to be attained. So what Smith is saying, the object of the BB is like the key note of a music piece. It is so important, you see. Yes. So in a music piece, the keynote is the note that sets the other notes so that there's harmony. That's how important the keynote is. So if the keynote is wrong or is not correctly played, the whole piece will, will go out of harmony. And this is this is exactly what the object is. That's what Smith is saying. The advancement of Christ's kingdom was the flag we raised at the very beginning because that is the keynote. And that flag has never been lowered. Never. And today we lift it up higher than ever we did before. And we believe that the very existence of the Boys Brigade depends upon the maintenance of the high position that we took up at the start. So, so let me just underline what he's saying, that from the very beginning, the key note has been the advancement of Christ's kingdom. It's like a flag that we raise, and we, and we have not lowered the flag. And it is so important to keep it flying. And he says that the very existence and the continuance, if you like, of the Boys Brigade depends upon the high position that we accord to the object. So if any organization of the BB, any, any council, any, any chapter of the Boys Brigade were to decide that they will not want to advance Christ's kingdom, then there's no reason for them to continue existing. That's what Smith is saying. That they may as well close shop, isn't it? Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sure all of us will agree to that. Next slide, please. <clears throat> now, referring to the first part of the object, there's the advancement of Christ's kingdom. Sir Donald Finmore, he's an important man. So Donald Fillmore, he was a vice president of the BB, and he was one of the one of the high court, one of the judges, one of Her Majesty's judges in those days. And also, what's interesting about uh, Sir Donald Fillmore was that he was actually captain of a Boys Life Brigade company. He was not the captain of the Boys Brigade Company, but a Boys Life Brigade Company. And then, as if you know history, in 1926, these two decided to merge because they are very identical. And so, out of that merger came the Boys Brigade. And a number of things happened as a result of the merger. But anyway, Sir Donald Finmore was actually a captain of the Boys Life Brigade. But up after the merger, his company became a Boys Brigade company and he himself became the vice president of the BB. And he gave his whole commitment to the work of the BB. And this is what he said about the advancement of Christ's kingdom, the very object that the Boys Brigade seeks to advance. He said, there can be nothing higher or more important than the advancement of Christ's kingdom, isn't it? There's nothing higher, not wealth or money or position, but advancement of Christ. And at the same time, there's nothing lower 
than the object because our members, our boys and girls, deserve the best. And this is what uh, Sir Donald Fingmore said about our cause, our object. That it is something that we can hold dear to because there's nothing higher, nothing more important than that boys and girls come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet, there's, it's not something that's, that can be lowered because our members deserve the best. Okay, now let's now look at some of the uh, uh, text in the object. <clears throat> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, just hold on to this. <clears throat> Actually, if George can go back to the object, uh, three slides back. Ah, okay. This would be very good. Thanks, George. What I like to emphasize here today, actually I can, I can, I can ex give, an, give an exposition on every word of this object, but that will take me an hour. What I want to emphasize today is not the first part, which is advancement of Christ's kingdom, because I think all of us uh, subscribe to that and understood what that means. What I want to emphasize today is the word that is in the red today, habits of obedience and so forth. So the BB has these two parts for, for its object. There's the first part, which is the advancement of Christ's kingdom, which all of us interpret it as sharing the gospel, ushering boys and girls into his kingdom. The second part of the object is the promotion of certain habits like obedience, reverence, self-respect. Okay, one word is missing from there. Uh, discipline as well. O-R-D-S. <clears throat> and all that tends towards a Christ, true Christian manualist. <clears throat> ah, good. Well done. George, you're very efficient. Okay. <clears throat> but the error, the, the, the fault is mine, not George. I, I'm the one who, who, who made a mistake. Yeah. Now, so this is the second part of the object. And a, sh a, a, a shorthand for what I'm saying is that the second part of the BB object is about character development, Christian character development. And that's why... Uh, William Smith talks about true Christian manliness. It's about character. Now, so, so all the features or the, the virtues that form part of a person's character are listed here. A person of character would, have, would be an obedient person, would be reverent, would have self-respect, would be disciplined. But that's not all. Eh? William Smith could not, could not itemize all the virtues, right? Like honesty uh, and, and uh, punctuality and so on. So he said, he added the word, and all that tends towards a true Christian man. So in other words, the second half of the object is about character development. But let us not go away thinking that Smith was only interested in promoting these virtues. He was actually interested in promoting the habits of these virtues. And that's why it was phrased that way. The promotion of habits of obedience, the promotion of habits of reverence, and so forth. This emphasis on a habit is important because as uh, a few slides later will show, uh, George, you don't mind, just uh, forward to watch your thoughts. One more. Okay, yes. <clears throat> this is a very, um, this, is a, uh, this is just a, a saying that I picked up somewhere, a quotation that I picked up somewhere. <clears throat> George, is it there? Uh, watch your thoughts. No, that one before this. That's this one. 
because thoughts leads to words, words leads to action, and uh, action then become habit, you see. And notice it is after we have attended to our habit that then these habits become character. Now, the, the, the emphasis on habit is so important because I often find myself in a hurry to leave home. Maybe I, 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 I slept in and I was a bit late for work and I will be in a hurry. Sometimes I even skip my breakfast to actually be on time. But no matter how, how, how much in a hurry I was, I was always brush my teeth because that has become my habit. So no matter what happens, the circumstances may be, the habit will kick in for me. And that's why William Smith uh, recognizes the importance of habit. So the Boys Brigade is concerned that our members are not just obedient while they are with us. They are not just disciplined while they are with us. But that into their lives, obedience, discipline, self-respect, and so forth have become habitual. They are now habits. I want to, I, I, I'm, I like to illustrate this, the importance of, of uh, BB emphasizing on the promotion of habits of virtues rather than just the virtues themselves. I like to illustrate this by giving you a story. This is probably a true story. A, a, a national serviceman or someone who just joined the army and let us call him uh, Joe, J-O-E, Joe. Now Joe will have to go to go through uh, basic military training. In the US, you will call it boot camp, you, know? you have to go to boot camp. And I can tell you basic training can be very, very demanding, very, very physically tough. And at boot camp or basic training, every morning, our friend Joe has to make his bed for inspection. The bed, the bed sheets, the mattress, the pillow, and all must be properly arranged for later inspection. We call it a standby bed, they call it. His blanket had be, be folded, folded neatly, and then his the, the bed sheet has to be so tightly uh, put together that if you put a, a let's say a, a, a 50 cent coin, one of those thicker coin, it should be able to balance on itself on that bed sheet. That's, that's how tightly how the bed sheet should be. And and then when Joe goes out for physical training for his drill and then he comes back in the day, he won't even dare to sleep on the bed that he has so nicely made. He will sleep on the floor because he has to keep the bed in a nice condition all the time. Now, a few years later, Joe is now a, a student at the university. And like most students, he has own uh, room in the camp on campus. Now, if we were to visit Joe in his study in the room at the university, the chances are you will find that his bed is all in a mess. The blanket will be in an unholy mess. His pillow may be all over the place, and there'll be p uh, pajamas all over. Now what has happened? Why the difference? It is not that Joe does not know how to make beds. Remember, he did a fantastic job when he was in the army. It is just that that tidiness, that orderliness was not a habit that he has acquired. It was just done for show, for inspection. It was just done so that he can get away uh, from being scolded or penalized. But now that he's on his own, without anyone to check on him, 
all these are forgotten. And that's why when we train our members, it's very important that we should not be satisfied that our members stand to attention uh, when, we, when we give them a command, they, they address you as yes sir, no sir. Don't be so, so content with that yet. Because what we want to ensure is that all these virtues and all these features of a good character will become habits in their life. So that years later, when they are no longer in a BB, they are still obedient, they are still full of self-respect, and so forth. The, 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 the things that we have sought to train in them. So this is what uh, Smith wanted to do when he phrased the object. That in developing character, the virtues that we want to develop must become habitual in the boys and the girls. Let me go on. I'll skip the next slide, uh, George. <coughs> going to religion. Right. Smith has certain ideas about religion. Right. This, is his, this is our second idea now. How much time do I have? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we really don't have much time. Now, William Smith himself was a religious man. And he was converted, if you have read his book, in 1874, or rather he was revived. He went to a revival meeting uh, in 1874, organized by uh, the great American evangelists, Moody and Sankey. So D.L. Moody was in Scotland you know, and Smith uh, had a revival when he attended the public meetings organized by Moody and Sankey. Now, yeah, the next slide will be good. But these are the words that came from Smith later when he was running the BB company. He said, and we read here, he, he expressed distrust. He did not trust some of these sudden conversions. So these big rallies that held and these altar calls, that's what he meant. He disliked these pledges. No? And Smith revealed to a colleague, to another officer, why he did not approve of all this gospel rally type and uh, evangelism that's done in the company. He said, by using the necessary means, I could get every boy in the company to profess conversion and it wouldn't be worth the breath expended. Smith came to realize that gospel rallies and all these evangelistic efforts is not really effective. And as he said, he could actually use all the necessary means. He could, he could, he could use whatever means he at his command, and every member could be forced to become Christian but he wouldn't want to do that. So this is why Smith was hesitant and had reservation about auto calls. But he thought these are just emotionalism. But I'm sure this is going to uh, upset some of us. You may then say, what is this? You know? And how are we going to uh, advance Christ's kingdom? Now think for a while. If a one-time gospel talk and, and gospel rally can do the job. Perhaps there's no need for Boys Brigade. Perhaps there's no need for BB companies to operate on a week-by-week -week basis when all you need to do is bring in a traveling evangelist and convert the whole lot of them. In other words, what Smith is presenting to us is a method of evangelism that is on a long-term basis. It takes a long-term view of conversion. It is not a once-off thing. And it is not something that's based 
on emotionalism. And I, I can think of my own experience that uh, it took me a long time before I became Christian. And I was many years in the company before I decided uh, to commit my life to Christ. And the many factors that came into play were the influence of the officers, the example they have set, the Bible teaching I receive. And I'm quite certain that if there was a gospel rally, uh, I would respond, I'm sure. But I'm not sure that I would know exactly what I was doing. So if you do have gospel meeting or, or evangelistic mission type of, of uh, events in your company, just remember, uh, I, I don't think you, you should discontinue, I don't think so, but just remember what Smith is saying. And just remember that this is precisely why the BB method uh, is in place, because it offers something that is more uh, long-term and more uh, sure proof. Right. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Uh, here, Smith explained the, his real thinking. The Boys' Brigade is not only retaining boys in Sunday school or in church, all right, but it is in the hands of God, it is molding lives, character, which I talk about, right? encouraging them, and so forth. <clears throat> and then he goes on, we try and win the boys for Christ, by presenting to them the view, that view of Christianity to which we know that nature would respond. That means he, he's presenting to them a right version of Christianity, not, not the instantaneous view of, not the quickie view of Christianity, but a, a, a view of Christianity that is for the long run, in other words. Okay, we must quickly move on. Uh, there are a few more, but I'm not sure we have the time for that. Next uh, slide, please. Smith has a few things to talk to say to officers, and I thought this is important for us since many of you are officers. Well, actually, I still have quite a bit to cover, but please, the next slide. <clears throat> yes, officers' inference. The next one. You know, we often say that the Boys Brigade is not a mechanism, it's not a magic formula that will work on its own. And this explains why certain companies are successful, certain companies are not. It's the same organization, and perhaps operating in the same town, or same city, or same country. And yet, one is successful, one is not. Or you take on a global uh, basis, why is it that some BB uh, work seem to be more successful in one country than in another? It's the same organization again, and we all face the same external factors. I think the key is that uh, this is where the leadership comes in, the quality of officers come in and that's why it is so important isn't it that we have people running the BB officers of the highest caliber because the work of BB is not easy and it will not work the method will not succeed if we do not have the right committed leadership that's needed so Smith recognizes this and so he's, he talks about how officers are, are able to exercise a personal influence over their boys and their girls. And this is where the scriptural principle of iron, sharpening iron comes in, right? Uh, the modeling process. This is not so much what we say, but what we do, isn't it? And Smith here wanted to emphasize very strongly the place of personal influence on the part of officers. I can say more, but I will just uh, move on then.
uh, the point being that officers play a most important role. Let's go. Uh, to, we, will, we will skip because uh, I'll leave this to you to read. Uh, that, uh, the next few slides are about what officers should do. You know. uh, but I'll just pause here. Yeah, I'll just pause here. Right? That it is so important that we do not have officers on our role, on the membership role, who are not active or absentee officers. It's very important that we do not have them. Because if they are not with us, if they're not committed to the work that they have volunteered to do, how are they going to be an influence for good? How are they going to be a factor for good in the lives of the boys and girls? Because remember, we are talking about character formation, right? And character is formed, the formation of character is a result of one person influencing another. And if an officer is not able to be present and he's an absentee officer, I, I really have my doubts that he can be effective in exercising a continual influence for the good of the boys and the girls. And what's worse, if you have a lot of uh, absentee officers on your role and they're not there during your weekly meetings, a number of things will happen. Your absentee officers are actually setting a bad example to the rest of the company because they, they themselves are not there. And very often, these absentee officers are the ones who will be criticizing the captain. They are the ones who are going to, to, to make problem or create problem for the rest of the officers. So I would emphasize very strongly that unless an officer, although he's a volunteer, if he's not going to be committed, then it's better not to have him on the road. Okay, I must go on to the next point, which is about uniform and ranks. And then one more item and then I will end. Now, as you know, the Boys Brigade is a uniform organization. That means that uh, uniform is an important part of our structure and our program. And Smith, uh, places or place uh, great importance on uniform. But it is very important that we wear the right type of uniform. And Smith uh, is very particular that we put on the right sort of uniform and that our uniform and our ranks are not too especially on the part of the officers. I'm not talking about the boys and the girls. On the part of the officers, Smith is very cautious that we do not beautify, we do not glorify ourselves. We do not make our uniform like so colorful and so decorated. So Smith was very concerned about it. And this is why a BB officer uniform traditionally has always been very simple. The idea is that we must not steal the thunder from our, our boys and girls. And we must not try to, to glorify us by our uniform. Same with ranks. Ranks, actually ranks in the, uh, among the officers are not to be used in connection with your name. But I know this is done in Malaysia. So please uh, carry on what you're doing. But uh, the tradition is that we do not address someone as captain so-and-so or lieutenant so-and-so. We often, we always address someone as Mr. So-and-so, lieutenant of the company. Mr. So-and-so, captain of a company. Because these are not real ranks. These are just appointments. But what I want to say is Smith was so particular and, and he, he saw the danger of, be, of us getting a uh, uh, of us become overdoing things like in the uh, he there was a real example in in US boys really went to America 
very early, 1887, BB was already in the US and it seems that it was quite a success. There were many companies there. And by, by the year 1893, they had already 14,000 members with 200 over companies in America. Today, if you look at the website of the Global Fellowship, these are the groups that are listed, but actually none of them except the third one exists. And even the third one, the Boys and Girls Brigade of Nina Menasha, is not quite the Boys Brigade that we know. It's more like a, like a YMCA kind of thing. They have their own building and, and their programs that goes on every day. But the BB actually no longer exists. I hope I'm wrong, but there has been a failure in that sense, a decline. And, and that's because, partly because I think, uh, officers then in America did not take William Smith's advice. They started to decorate themselves, wear very colorful uniform, like generals, like army officers, and they even have swords, they were even carrying swords, and all the medals that they wear. And officers can go up to, uh, can, after, I mean, officers call themselves captain, major, lieutenant, commanders, and general, and so forth. So when Willis Smith visited US, he was quite upset, you know. And he came home to the UK and he wrote, expressing his sad disappointment. Now, it's, it's very unusual for a guest who visited a country to be critical about what is done there. But that's what Smith did. He actually uh, wrote, I think it's on the next screen. Eh? <clears throat> he actually wrote these words, next slide. Don't worry about this, it's on the handbook. Eh? You know, <clears throat> that he saw many things that were not quite in order. For example, he saw uh, members in the BB, so-called boys, who are old enough to have wives because they never adhere to the age limits. You know. And next one, uh, next slide. And with regard to officers' uniform, Smith wanted simplicity of uniform, but they went to great extent of decorating themselves, including the wearing of swords with medals and decorations, and maybe all kinds of things. I think you can you can visualize. Next slide. <clears throat> They adopted high military titles, as I said, going up to general as well, colonels. And, and of course, of course, you know, when you, when you start to introduce all this, you are bound to attract men and women who love high ranks, who love nice uniform, smart uniform, high sounding titles, so forth. You're bound to attract them. But the danger is that we might attract people who have come to join us for the wrong reason. And this exactly what happened because we must actually predicted that the BB in America would not succeed. And as I just shown you, if you visit the website of a global fellowship, there's the work in America has almost disappeared after these years. Right, let me go on to the final one. Then. <clears throat> Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth. This is from the Bible. Ecclesiastes. And this was like a motto to Smith, you know. Of course, a motto of the BB show and steadfast. 
But this phrase appear in all our membership cards from the very beginning. And sometimes people say this was a BB motto, but it's not. It's actually his family motto. There are a few things here. This verse emphasizes that there is a window of outreach to the boys and the girls. And this is while they are young, in their youth, you see. And the Bible says that before they, they grow old and they will forget about spiritual things. And this is why the Boys Brigade exists to work among boys and girls, the, among youth, in other words, at the stage when they are most open to the faith. Next slide, please. <clears throat> in my thinking, this verse addresses what we call the age group window of Boys Brigade. So Willow Smith recognizes that the BB cannot meet the needs of too wide an age group. And hence, he limited, there's a cut of age. At that time, it was 17. But over the years, it's, it's, become, it's been increased to 18, 19, maybe 20 max. And after that, the BB member must, must be discharged. You see. So there is a window of age group because William Smith wanted to focus on them. And that's why when younger boys, the younger brothers of BB boys who are below 12 years old wanted to join, William Smith said no. He was against younger boys joining. And he told them, you wait for your turn. Because he recognizes that the boy spirit has no capacity uh, to serve from the very young to the very old. And if it's such a big age range, our effectiveness will, be, will not be there. And also, how are we going to capture the attention of a boy or girl for over 15 years or 20 years, it's, it's almost impossible. Yeah. But here I want to depart a little bit from Smith, but based on what, what he is saying, because I begin to realize the wisdom that Smith had of not taking in very young children into the organization. Again, this may upset some of you who uh, are opening the doors of BB to very, very young children. Smith's concern was that, and this is also my concern, that when you start to open the doors to very young boys and girls, they are actually not in the frame of mind for the things that the BB wanted to teach. They're not at that stage where they can decide whether they are going to embrace Christ or not. They're too young for that. I'm talking about the very young, young children, like four or five years old. You know. And then, how are you going to retain the interest of a young boy or girl in, let's say, five years old, six years old, until he or she is 18 or 19 years old? It's very difficult. They will lose interest. And they will leave you, maybe when they are in secondary school. And they leave you just when we needed them to challenge them with the faith, isn't it? So in a way, by letting in younger children in, we shoot our own foot, as it were. You know, because they don't stay until they're old. Of course, they are exception, I must say but I'm talking in general terms. Then, of course, when you have very young children joining, you basically turn the organization into a children's brigade. Think about that, you know. Young boys and girls in high school and in later primary school, they're all wanting to become adults. They, all, they can't wait to grow up. They want to be youth, they want to be adults. And then you 
turn the organization into a children's organization where they join. No wonder in some countries where they have taken in pre-juniors, they are going to have problem recruiting older boys and girls because why do I want to join a children's organization? And then from strictly the investment point of view, the investment of time point of view, if you take in very young children, you are actually offering a nursery. You're running a nursery. And of course, parents will send the, their, their babies to you so that they can go shopping and so forth. Now, I'm being very unkind here, but please, I'm trying to illustrate a very important point that when an organization then become one that is over successful with very young ones, you're going to have problem attracting the older members to join. And from the investment point of view, you're going to spend the next 15 years training them before they can become leaders. But if you were to emphasize and concentrate on your primers, on your company section or senior section, it's a matter of time of short few years, they can return to serve. And more importantly, they are at the stage of the life when the matters of faith are being given serious consideration. So I do ask you to think about this more deeply. I'll be happy to talk more about this with you and to give you the example of what happened in other countries where such experiment had been undertaken without the success that they wanted. So finally, let me conclude eh, that, <coughs> next slide, that Smith philosophy are still relevant actually. Next slide, please. And this is the reason why I have not used the word method because methods can be amended. Methods are not uh, always relevant. So you, can, you, you must, in fact, keep updating your methods so that they can be effective. But philosophies are, are ethos, are things and values that are meant to stay. So admittedly, what I have shared just now, there is an overlap of methods and philosophies as well. And to give you the illustration, you know, before the Union of Boys Brigade and Boys Life Brigade in 1926, the Boys Brigade members used to carry rifles, wooden ones, dummy ones. But after the, the, the merger between Boys Brigade and Boys Life Brigade, and that was the condition for the merger on the part of Boys Life Brigade, the BB agreed to discard the use of rifles. And the reason was around that time, the 1920s, there was a time of the World War. So it wasn't very nice uh, for young boys to go around carrying rif rifles and weapons of uh, destruction, isn't it? And so Smith, in fact, Smith has already passed away. The brigade uh, leadership agreed that they will abolish the carrying of rifles. So that is an example of methods giving way without the BB ideal being retained. So I hope that all of us would have the wisdom to retain what is important and fundamental in the BB and to discard things that we do that are no longer relevant for us. So thank you very much. I'll end there. Thank you. Right. Thank you, um, sir, for the wonderful sharing. And now let's go to the Q&A session. Um, so I've, uh, uh, I've sent you the questions uh, as well. Okay. Now, there's, there's a question that uh, 
how do you want me to do, uh, George? Uh, from number one, I think number one, one, eh? from number five one. can be skipped because okay. um, Darren has uh, answered it or we have answered it just now as well. All right, all right. Number okay. one and number two is about um, where can I get the books that you have showed? Okay, yeah. That is a very easy question. You can't get those books anymore, I'm afraid. <laughs> you can't. Maybe, maybe uh, the latest one that I showed you, uh, the Boys Brigade a Illustrated History. But this is this is not very detailed, but the others uh, I'm afraid you might not be able to find them. What I do is when I go to the UK, I would always um, go to bookstores or secondhand bookshops, and I always look for them and, and look look for them and buy them. This this one this is a solid one. This may still be obtainable if you go to Amazon.com. You might be able to get this, but it's not cheap. I must tell you. All right, so let's uh, first question. Uh, what we can do is actually, because these are no longer copyright, you know, is to uh, reprint them, actually. The BB should do that. I, I used to do that. I, I, one of my copies, uh, Willem A. Smith, uh, I got a printer to, to uh, take out every page and then uh, reprinted them. And this is available from BB Singapore, I think, just one of the books. We learn A. Smith or the BB. Okay, uh, you want to have a list of these. I, I will prepare at some stage. Huh? All right, that's a good one. I should have a bibliography actually. Next, uh, referring discipline. Um, I think the ones was. Oh, that one. That was my my fault. Huh? But good thing that you spotted. Huh? Very good thing. Yeah. So discipline was never missed out. I missed it out. That's all. Pardon me. Uh, question number seven about ranks as answered in terms of um, personal inference. Uh, well, what's the question? I mean, personal inference is like a man-to-man like -man kind of thing, uh, modeling, you know, being with setting the example, making oneself available, showing care and concern. There are many ways. A good teacher will tell you how to do it. A good Christian teacher will tell you how to do it, isn't it? A new teacher will tell you that also. Uh, we'll, we'll go on then. Eh? Question and number now, uh, before that, the, the question of ranks. As I said, traditionally, there are only three ranks in the BB, traditionally. You know? Warren officer, lieutenant, captain. There's only three ranks. In Singapore, we introduce what we call second lieutenant, you see? and this is just to conform with, with the military practice in Singapore. And I think in Malaysia, you can, you can make your, your amendments. But there is a reason for having the three ranks, by the way, there's a reason. One, a warrant officer is someone who has not been trained. He's not really an officer yet, you see? he's a new newbie, you know, he's a new person. He's not even a committed Christian, perhaps. And he could, could someone, he could be someone come, who had come from outside. So you don't want anyone to just come in new to become an officer. So you give him the rank of warrant officer. Secondly, lieutenant are officers who are fully committed to the work that they do and they have finished all the necessary training. And one of the lieutenant is the captain, you see? So only one person must be the captain or the chairman, right? So that's the reason for the three ranks. Chaplain is not a rank. Chaplain is the clergyman who looks after the spiritual affairs of the company and he, he represents the church in terms of authority and so forth. So the simple rank structure. So if you have more complicated rank structure than this, not to worry. Just define them carefully so that it is not a matter of promotion, you know. Like, for example, I know one BB captain in uh, Malaysia. And then due to work and so on, and maybe because he wanted other officers to have a chance to become an officer, he stepped down as captain, he became a lieutenant, right? Because there can only be one, or one captain. So he, he's, now, he's now a lieutenant. But everywhere, everywhere he went, people asked him, hey, how come you're demoted, huh? <laughs> who demoted you? 
what what do you do wrong that you're demoted? And he was so embarrassed by it. I have to explain to him. It's not, not a matter of promotion at all. It's a matter of function. So if you are not doing the job, you're not the captain. That's all. Okay, but anyway, don't let me upset you with your current practices. We go on to question number eight. Uh, yeah, as I said, sometimes there's a confusion. This person who asks this question is very good. He has read the book, I think. Uh, sometimes the phrase, uh, remember thy creator in the days of thy youth, is sometimes mistaken to be the motto of the BB. Because, as I said, uh, this verse appears in all membership cards introduced from, from 1883. And in most of our literature, the, the, the verse appears, you see. But as I said, this is actually Smith family verse, you know. And that this verse reminds us, uh, gives us the basis for our work, you know. That we want to work with youth so that they can remember their creator before it's too late. And that we don't go be below that because, well, as I've explained. Okay, so I hope I've answered the person who asked question eight. And finally, the, the ninth, uh, no, no, because I still have some more question. Ah, this is about the change of words uh, in the object of the BB in Malaysia. You don't, you no longer say Christian manliness. You, you change it to Christian character. So the question to me is, uh, do you think we have shortchanged the BB when we uh, when we change it? Well, I think that uh, uh, this is debatable. Huh? This is debatable. Uh, it's just like people asking us, how come you still call yourself the boys' brigade when your girl is in the BB? Is, is, is this kind of thing, this kind of gen, gender issue always come up. And I of, often explain this way, that um, we must always go beyond uh, gender, go beyond gender. Just like when you read the Bible, isn't it? Uh, the Bible also uses uh, male language, right? But you know that when we say son of, sons of God is actually children of God as well. It includes daughters of God as well. John, John chapter 1 verse 14, says, as many as received him, to them gave him power to become the sons of God. It refers to uh, girls as well, to ladies as well. It must. You know. So as to whether uh, by changing, I, I personally thought that uh, there, was a, there was some grammatical, uh, it's not quite correct grammatical, Grammatically, the way the way BB um, object has been phrased, right? because you, you don't really say, and, and the and the promotion habits of BB and all that tends towards a true Christian character. Is, is that your the way you have put it? Yeah, it is not quite sound to me, not like, grammatically. But I guess the emphasis there is to 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 make it uh, inclusive yeah, of the girls in our organization. I, I, I think I leave this to, to the expert uh, among yourself to, to work it out. Uh, but the main point to say is that the, the, the fundamental part of the object being the advancement of Christ's kingdom is among boys and girls. You see. Let's go beyond that. You see. And that's why there are, I didn't have a chance to talk about this. This is quite a controversial issue. Some people till today and some of my very good friends in the BB would tell me that William Smith would roll in his grave if he knows that we have admitted girls. But I disagree, you know, as I explained. Because the first fundamental in the object is not advancement of Christ's kingdom among boys. First fundamental is the advancement of Christ's kingdom. That's fundamental. Next uh, question uh, about rifles. Eh? Okay, now, rifle drill in a BB, in the days of William Smith, was part of BB. You know? Every every meetings, every parade, they have to carry that weapon. And 
when I was in England, I have actually seen those uh, dummy rifles. So when they were abolished, it does not mean that musketry cannot be an activity. It doesn't mean that. So make a distinction between what is an activity and what is something that's part and parcel of the BB. So in Singapore, <laughs> although we don't carry rifles for foot drill all the time, we have and we have organized musketry training. During my time there, we tied up with army camp for one Saturday or Sunday, and then we go there and use the weapon for, foot, for, for arms drill training. That's perfectly fine because it's an activity, but you don't see us going around carrying rifles. That's what I mean. Okay, uh, I hope I've answered your question. So there's no problem with you using foot rifles for display and for all that. By all means, do that. You know? Yeah. In fact, I saw an, a, a display item using wooden rifles and I was very impressed with that. Please continue. You know? Yeah. And if you can, introduce shooting as, as an activity. Why not? Isn't it? You go to Thailand, you can even uh, uh, fire revolvers or that. It's a sport. In other words, next question. Uh, okay, about reprinting. As I said, most of the books I've already, there's no more copyright. We have copyrights for 50 years. Some of these books are older than, in fact, one of the books I have is 1930 something, you know. Yeah, so don't worry about that. Yeah. And if you do need to get copyright permission, by all means, right for permission, right? Especially the thick one, you know, by Collins. Collins, this, this one is still copyrighted. Yeah. Okay, then BBM has introduced OTP. What's OTP? I think that's OTP. Um, OTP is um, a program that we've introduced two years ago. It's called Officers Training Program. So it's, it's a continuous, it's a CPD for officers, like yeah. in I, I don't think that uh, we should be worried about introducing additional badges or medals. You know, you know like I know BBM has those medals. In fact, I was awarded a medal, but I never won them anyway. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, as long as we know that we're not seeking to glorify the officers and we're not overdoing things. You know, the uniform of BB Hong Kong officers are very smart, right? Very nice. I have no problem with that as well. And I think that in their circumstances, where all these various uniform groups are so well-dressed, they need to compete, you see. I, I have no problem with that. I think what is behind what I said just now is to be aware of the danger of uh, drawing attention to ourselves and glorifying ourselves to the extent that we are attracting the wrong type of people to serve in the BB, right? That's what I'm saying. So if you are quite certain that you can take care of the danger, by all means, do what is necessary and be progressive. Yeah, all right. I think those are all the questions I've uh, yes. attempted. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think right. I've taken a lot of your time now. Uh, I pass it back to George. George, it's over to you. Um, no worries, sir. Um, I think we, we thank uh, Mr. Lim very much for uh, his, uh, his sharing. I think um, even though the time is, is slightly over, but it's okay because it's, it's, it's such a wonderful sharing uh, and I think it makes me even hunger for part two uh, even more. Uh, I mean, like, if we have the privilege and have the time. And... Uh, if you guys give a thumbs up if you think that uh, what has been shared was very insightful. And if you want to have a uh, second round, give a thumbs up. Uh, then we'll try to convince Mr. Lim <laughs> for, for, for second round. But other than that, uh, because of the time, uh, we couldn't allow for more uh, verbal questions. But once again, thank you guys uh, very much. And thank you, uh, sir, for really making the time this Saturday afternoon to share with us uh, in this very concise um, manner of uh, the philosophy of uh, Sir William. It's, uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Lim. Thank you. It was my, my, my privilege to share. Yeah. So I wish all of you uh, success in advancing Christ's kingdom among boys and girls. 
and in promoting the habits of obedience, reverence, discipline, self-respect, and all that makes for Christian character. 